3174 relating to approved lady lane. And when we last left, we had some members uh, from the public who had been in line to testify, but we didn't have a chance to hear from each one of them. So we're going to call their names first so that they can have that opportunity. And I want to let the members know that we are going to need to defer decision making until Thursday in room 312, and we'll announce the time uh, a little bit later on, but I just wanted to make sure that folks knew that we weren't going to have a chance to uh, DM this afternoon, uh, but we will plan to uh, defer until Thursday. With that, Vice Chair? Okay, this is House Bill 174. Justifier uh, Richard M. Dean. Terry Breen. Perry. Hello, I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm Perry Breen. Um, listening to the testimony thus far, I was reminded of a comment Abraham Lincoln made. The world will, will no, no longer remember what we say here. And I think you probably got it pretty much on the button. There's just a couple of things that I would like to say something about because uh, I'm a very strong uh, proponent of this bill. And most of the reasons have already been spoken to. So I'd like to talk to just a few that I didn't hear much comment on. One has to do with the actual verbiage that's being proposed for these labels. And I don't recall having heard anybody make a point that I was able to pick up on as to what it is that's actually being proposed. Most of what I heard from the people opposing the bill seemed to be take, taking it for granted that what was going to be put on these labels was going to be deleterious to the products which carried those labels. I'll, uh, um, tobacco industry labels, which were clearly meant uh, to be extremely cautionary. Uh, unless I'm mis mistaken, I haven't heard anything cautionary about what's to be put on these labels. And I'm reminded of something that happened in the dairy industry decades ago when some dairies started beginning fortifying their milk with vitamin D, and they were required to put vitamin D fortified on their product. Uh, which probably encouraged some people to buy those particularly labeled products. The second thing I'd like to speak to is a little bit about uh, the onerous burden that seems to be implied to the manufacturers uh, for having to make this change. I was a principal partner in a Hawaii food manufacturing concern named Tahitian Goddess uh, from the time of its inception and have been through uh, many changes just required by the necessities of business uh, or just how we learned as we went. The some that were required uh, as we grew and were requ required by our size. I went from what we used to have labels printed at Kinko's and then cut them up on a chopper and apply them with glue until we were ordering in the hundreds of thousands from Taiwan. I think it's basically the same for most businesses that have to label their product. It's, it's more akin to changing your tires. It's something that you do regularly. And there is a cycle. And if this bill were to go into effect, and it were not to say, as of such and such a date within, say, the next 30 days, you will be required to have all new labels on every bit of packaging. If there were a period of time that this would be phased in, uh, even say six months, this would not be burdensome. The, uh, what it costs to change the plates or the graphic images for a label um, are essentially an hourly wage to somebody who's skillful doing that. And what it sh the, the cost of having them printed um, is immaterial. Thank you, that's just what I wanted to share. Thank you. Next testifier, Mike um, Oliva. Hello. Can you hear me? 
hear me? Yes. Yeah, my name's Mike Pellerin. Uh, I've lived in Hawaii for six years. I'm 61 years old. Uh, I really love this land. I've come to love the people and the land here. Um, don't worry, I'm going to make this short. I don't have a lot of facts to give you, okay? Um, I first set foot on the islands in 1966, and then I remember 1974, I spent a few months here, and I hitchhiked around, and I have memories uh, back then, and I compare it to what I see today. It seems like the people back then were a lot healthier. And I look around today, and there seems to be like an obesity epidemic, a diabetes epidemic, a heart disease epidemic, an unhealthy epidemic. People don't have a lot of money to eat organic. They do eat the cheap food in the, in the, in the supermarkets, okay? By the way, I taught English in Japan to a lot of rich people. Let me tell you one thing. Those rich people that have all that money, they would pay millions of dollars to have their health back, okay? If money's the issue, I think we're missing the point. Monsanto has a lot of money, and they pay their scientists a lot of money, okay? I've heard there's other scientists that say the opposite. And what did Monsanto give us anyway? They gave us Agent Orange. I'm a child of the 60s. I have people I went to high school with that went to that war and died because of Agent Orange. They didn't know about Agent Orange back then. It was pushed upon us by the military industrial complex. Okay? It's being pushed upon us now by the same company to eat GMO foods. Look at our reefs, they're dying. I hear it's because of the pesticides going into the oceans. Where do the pesticides come from? A chemical company, a chemical com company by the name of Monsanto and DuPont. Okay? Let's look at that. The love of money is the root of all evil, I've heard said before. You know? My, look at me, I'm 61. I've been health conscious for a long time. I'm pretty healthy. And I love it. And I want to stay that way. And I think all we're asking here... The issue is just label the food, label it, let us know what we're eating, let us make our own decisions, okay? You know, I heard the national anthem yesterday, I watched the Super Bowl, that one uh, lyric, land of the free. Well, if we don't have food freedom, what kind of freedom do we have? By the way, this is not a political issue to me. It's not left wing, it's not right wing, it's not... Uh, Pro-choice, pro, oh, maybe it is pro-choice. <laughs> it's not a gay issue, you know, it's not, it's, uh, it affects us all. I went to that rally, it was great, we had young people, old people, left-wing people, right-wing people. It reminded me of the anti-war protests back in the 60s, and we stopped that war. God help us stop this. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Rick Morse. Morse. Kekoa Omo. Omo. Hello, and thank you for hearing us. My name is Kekoa Omo, and I am a concerned youth. I, I believe that GMOs are taking this taking this world down the wrong path, to put it really frankly. Um, and labeling GMOs gives us one way to identify what we're eating exactly. And all the things that were said today are exactly on path to what I'm trying to say, is that we're looking forward to the future. And if we don't have a future to look forward to, why even be concerned with our health? We don't even have the resources and the land to continue this kind of, this kind of lifestyle that we have now. The way we make the food on giant monocultures, spraying tons and tons of pesticides to counteract the lack of evolution from those monocultures, is a dead end. This is a dead end. And what I want to do is to create a new way of producing the food that we need for a growing population that is growing, and I understand the stress on that, but we're going about it the wrong way. 
these companies, Monsanto, they say they provide for everyone, and that's what they're trying to do is make enough food for the world. But the world can make enough food for itself with proper education and learning how to cultivate things smart. In Peru, there's Peruvian potato farmers that use the different sides of the mountain to circulate their crops and grow different potatoes at different times of the season so they can have food all year round. This is the kind of technology that we can incorporate into our society. We could have vertical farming towers with solar panels that are completely self-powered, that we could have food for enough for many people, maybe everyone. And this is a matter that affects everyone down to the individual, from the old to the young. It doesn't matter who you are. Even the people working in Monsanto, at some point, these interventions in our food are going to come back around full circle. It doesn't matter when, it will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. Aloha my kako and mahalo for the opportunity to testify and mahalo for the consideration of my testimony. Um, I'm just going to keep this short and sweet because you guys have more than enough information and I think more than enough people who will support HB 174. Now, um, I'm sure you guys know precisely or at least enough about what uh, genetically modified is. And um, the issue here is that, um, I'm just gonna break it down really quick, and that's the fact that they are putting a Bt toxin into a seed so that it could withstand its own pesticides. And I, I mean, toxin in my food. I think people deserve the right to know. They deserve the right to know for their families and for their children and it's also proven to be like totally environmentally uh, irresponsible and unsustainable totally against GMO altogether and this is the first bill towards a nice big step towards changing the future into a more progressive more sustainable one mahalo Aloha, what's left of the committee. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm here today to testify in favor of House Bill 174. Thank you very much for introducing this bill and for um, hearing from the public uh, about labeling of GMO um, foods in Hawaii. Um, I'm here to support it for the obvious social uh, justice reasons that would be the right to know, the right to have knowledge, the right to have information in our society is a um, primary right within our democracy. And for that reason, that's my highest priority in you passing this bill. People ha have the right to know what um, they're eating. They have the right to know what is uh, being consumed. They have the right to know what they're feeding their children. They have the right to know what, they're, um, what is going into their groundwater what is going into their ocean, what's going into their land, they have the right to know. And therefore, I'm supporting this bill. Secrecy is not a democratic, uh, part of the democratic way. And more and more in Hawaii, people are becoming concerned about real health of their um, aina and their families. They're becoming asking more questions for good reason. You see all these young people here today, that's really, to me, really uh, inspiring because they want to know more, and um, I don't think it would cause the large companies that are uh, uh, pushing for GMO products in Hawaii and farming, I don't think it would cost them a drop of what they make in profit uh, around the world to label. They already do it, as someone pointed out, um, for the papaya uh, industry. Uh, uh, papayas that go to Japan are already labeled, so they just need to do what they do now for those um, products local uh, do that here as well. Um, you know, I'd just like to remind everyone that does, I'll just say one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, I follow campaign financing in Hawaii, and I see how much money flows through the legislature, legislature from Monsanto, Sygenta, DuPont, and about three other chemical companies that are um, pushing for uh, um, GMO products in Hawaii and, and fight bills like this. 
And I think, you know, the real reason that these bills never get passed is that it's the money that's coming in from these companies via campaign funding for candidates that get elected. It, it's unreal. It's like thousands and thousands of dollars. They're paying people that are supposed to be representing the voices of Hawaii to represent the interests of these international corporations. And that's the real problem. So um, I just went to the Senate to see if the companion bill was going to move. I, I heard from my legislator that he's not even planning to hear it. But I'm hoping that these young people here will go to the senator, uh, Senator Nishihara, and support this uh, counter to the same uh, mate of this bill in the Senate. And we'll try to see if we can move this along this time in our, our legislature, despite all the money coming in for politics. Thank you. Thank you. Blake Walsh. Hello there, my name is Blake Walsh. Aloha namaste. I come here as a concerned, critical thinking individual. Friends, what we are facing here today is corporate ambition. An ambition that serves to fill the pockets of biotech firms who claim to practice proper science at the cost of our health, our water, our food, our families, indeed our whole environment. Do not be fooled. Employees who don hazmat suits and respirators to spray the food grown here with toxic chemicals, despite the growing evidence of health concerns, is not responsible by any sense of the word. As a big fan of science, allow me to go through the scientific process with you. Ask a question, do background research, construct a hypothesis, test your hypothesis by doing an experiment, analyze your data and draw a conclusion, and last, communicate your results. Many other groups are communicating their results, which I doubt has fallen upon deaf ears. It seems to me that it is being nonchalantly brushed to the side and ignored, hoping that it falls to the wayside and that the people here will forget, uh, will forget about it. Following the track record of biotech industries, drawing from the experiments taking place on small farms on these islands, farms from India, the United States, and more, a question that comes to my mind is, are you trying to kill us? At what point will enough money and land destruction be enough to sway your consciousness to do the right thing? I'm for the outright banning of GMOs, though that's not on the table. Label the damned things and don't keep the public in the dark. Thank you. Jennifer, oh, I'm sorry, Dave Gonzalez. Aloha. Uh, I'm here today. Uh, I just wanted to come and uh, lend support to uh, SB 174. Thank you for hearing uh, this bill. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk about uh, some of the things I'm concerned about. Uh, we do, we do uh, wish the right to choose, so that's very important. Uh, uh, we know that um, GMO labeling has passed uh, in all of the islands, on all of the city, uh, the county councils, excuse me, for all of the islands, but then when it got here to Oahu, it's been stonewalled, so we were asking the, our legislators to be fair. Uh, we have gone, this, gone through this process before. We, we came to the legislature before, but they said, no, go, go through the uh, county, start from the bottom, go through the county. We have done that. We have demonstrated that there is great support on all the islands for labeling, and yet when we come here to our capital and to our legislators uh, were uh, met with a little bit of indifference. Uh, we want, we're hoping that uh, we can have labeling. Once again, uh, we do want uh, full disclosure. We want uh, people to have that choice. Everybody else has that choice uh, in, in the world. We want that choice for Hawaii. And, uh, so um, I'm very pleased uh, that uh, this that we're able to hear that. I hope that uh, we can hear uh, our bill, have our.
our Bill Heard on the other side, so we're asking our, uh, we're asking everybody to call to their, uh, legislator and ask them to, uh, please hear the bill, uh, the labeling bill. So, that's why I came here today and, uh, brought my sign. So, uh, we're hoping that, uh, uh, the legislature will listen to the will of the people and to uh, pass uh, labeling for all of, the, of uh, the islands. So that's why I'm here. Thank you very much for hearing me today. Thank you. Jen Jennifer Bonifacio. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Bonifacio. I am a concerned mother. Um, I want to make sure that my daughter's future and any future children that I have is secure and safe. I'm also concerned for all the KP in this in, in our in our island, in this world. The children are our future. The children are our legacy. If anyone thinks otherwise that the children are not that something else is their legacy, it's the children who pass down generations after us that are going to be there way way after we are gone. Way after they, we may have someone may have like invented the wheel. But if something happens, no one's going to remember who invented the wheel. But what I'm concerned, I, I believe that there's not enough studies being done. Yes, they're saying, okay, there's all these studies of saying safety, but what about the reports that are coming out of like India, where there's reports of umbilical cord deformities? The a midwife in India has been reporting that she's all, and all of a sudden there's all these um, deformities. And these are people who've been eating GMO soybeans or soy products for I don't know how many years. Because we know that the biotech companies have been doing their experiments outside of the United States before they actually bring it here into the United States. But nobody seems to be covering that. But some, there's, there's testimonials that I've seen from farmers here in the United States that say they are also seeing with their animals who've been eating GMO infected crops that they've also seen umbilical cord de uh, deformities from their baby animals. So what is it doing to, to our people? What is it doing to our animals? Is it affecting the sterility? I wonder why, if that's why there seems to be so many different people that seems to have issues trying to get pregnant nowadays. I just want to know exactly what we're going to do for our future. And I also want to know if these, how these biotech companies can live with themselves by trying to pull the wool over our eyes to say that our keikis are not affected, our, this, this is healthy for us, but how do they know? It takes generations to figure out how these things are really affecting us. And it hasn't even been one entire generation yet to actually see from start to finish what is happening. Thank you. Thank you. Julia McCormick. Aloha, and thank you for being here and listening to us. I'm not sure what happened to everybody else that was there earlier, but my name is Julia McCormick, and I appreciate your time. I know it's been a long morning. Um, anyway, I trust you all had a nice lunch today, and you chose wisely. Did you enjoy the Hawaii papaya that I've been here for years and years, and I remember a long time ago, I mean, not too long ago, that the papaya tasted completely different than it tastes now. Now I have to, you know, really search hard to find a, a good papaya. It doesn't taste like it used to anymore. And if you enjoyed um, some nice corn-fed beef today, are you curious how long down the line that went? Or even rice. Are you aware that now in Kansas on 32,000 acres, they're actually making tons of rice to distribute to the world that they've actually spliced with human liver DNA. Google it, you'll see numerous reports on it. You don't have to believe me here. Um, are we gonna be cannibal? Does that make me a cannibal? But I didn't have a choice, did I, on that one? It's gonna be Soylent Green and Jurassic Park and it's gonna be irreversible. Once you've tainted our soils and we are, you know, main basis here, we're losing our seeds. I'm a farmer and I want a choice to be able to have an opportunity to feed myself at some point. 
if the something happens and all of a sudden these big corporations have an incident and where they actually come out and claim that you know oh yeah we were wrong hiding these GMO studies and there is a problem it is problematic and now we're going to have to stop shipping you these wonderful products that we're dependent 90% of our food is dependent on these people but what happens are we going to feed Hawaii with that 10% we've got to make a change here in Hawaii now the world is watching and we're the ones that have the opportunity to step forward it's not just the world it's not just the capital that's watching it is God and I want you to think about it if you woke up tomorrow and you found a lump on your reproductive organs would you wonder did I make the wrong choice today did I make the wrong choice somewhere along the line or did I even have an opportunity to choose that's all I want an opportunity to choose because when it happens to you personally when you wake up and find that lump and you don't know where that came from but you want to even try to fix it believe me you'll go screaming everywhere you can to figure out who do I blame what was the cause of this was it me did I do something to deserve this or was it something that happened here today I don't know I can't tell you but you know I just hope and I pray that you take advantage of what you've been blessed with and remember that it all circulates around thank you thank you I'm Kumali, Lansat Haile Lincoln. I'm direct descendant of Kamehameha One. I'm here to support this bill. I don't want GMO on my, my land, my people's land. Um, yes, I support labeling GMO, but more importantly, I, I support to remove these companies off of our Aina. They are poisoning our Aina. And this is very wrong. And those people in the, the other 48 states, 49 states, decide they don't have enough cacao to send to us in the mats and containers. What are we going to do? If we continue to allow these people to poison <laughs> our land, where that we won't be able to grow our color anymore on our land. This is very wrong to allow big corporations with money to do this to our children and our grandchildren and us. It is very, very wrong. And this should be stopped completely. These people should be removed from our island. I work for United Horakocha, so I know exactly what these things do to you and how very dangerous these things are because I work for these companies I've seen it with my own eyes they show you films, they don't show you films anymore they show you films because you have to know these things they're spraying the field the wind all of a sudden blows in a different direction all the cars on the road people on the side of the road have said they I drove a delivery truck on the island of Maui. I picked up a load at the harbor, bringing it to Derry Road where my company was located. Accidentally, the load shifted. I dropped the load on the road. You know how very dangerous this is? They shut down the whole road. Cops on both sides of the road. No one can pass until we, our company, went there to clean what I dropped off of my truck. So now a few people think that this is all fun in games and, and it's not dangerous? Believe me, this is very dangerous. Agent Orange, only in Hawaii they allow this product to be used. In nowhere else in the world. My two brothers fought in Vietnam. Today they're both sick because of these things. 
what are we going to do? Continue to let these people destroy our, our, our country? Our land here? Where we all live? Where we all choose to live? Not just the Hawaiian people, Japanese, Chinese, Portuguese, Puerto Ricans, everybody. This is part of your Aina, like it is ours. It is your country, like it is ours. We must protect it from these people and these corporations that are poisoning our land. Aoli, I say Aoli to these people. And please, have them label their products. We want to know exactly what we are eating and buying from the stores. If they don't want to do this, tell them they must leave. Back up and leave. Did anyone else who hasn't testified want to testify? Could you please state your name, please? Aloha, my kako. My Hello. name is Wanita Kalamoni. And I am the subcommittee chair of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. I'm also an executive board member at large and a Native Hawaiian citizen advocate. Mahalo, Jessica. Chair Chair Woolley and Vice Chair Sonishi and members of the House Agricultural Committee. I am here to testify in strong support of House Bill 174 relating to food labeling. The Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii and the Democratic Party of Hawaii support the <coughs> food labeling as reflected in our current 2012 Democratic Party of Hawaii state convention which adopted a resolution to go ahead and support the labeling of GMO products. The focus of the world food supply needs to shift from its current focus on generic food ingredient labeling to what has been adopted in other parts of our nation and across the world specifically regarding genetically modified or genetically engineered materials in whole food labeling. Hawaii must support our right to know, protect our health, and not give in to anti-labeling proponents that claim it is too expensive to label. The solution could be as simple as a sticker. Hawaii could have an import rule for manufacturers to state whether their product is intended to be GMO or GMO-free, and whether it has been tested. Even the smallest producers would not be hindered with use of an additive sticker method. So there is no economic stumbling block for even the smallest mom and pop operation to sell products in Hawaii. No labeling only benefits the producers, both in terms of profit and plausible deniability. If we do not label it, we cannot track it. If we cannot track it, we cannot prove or disprove it was responsible for food allergies or illnesses. Not labeling GMOs harms Hawaiian agriculture. The Hawaii papaya growers have not had to notify Hawaii's consumers about the GMO status of their papayas. Why should Japan know if their papaya is GMO and Hawaiians not have access to this information? We are only hurting ourselves and the long-term viability of valuable agricultural crops. The Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii strongly supports GMO labeling and House Bill 174. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Hi, good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Philipson. I'm with Syngenta. And uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Willie and, and uh, Vice Chair Onishi and other members of the uh, committee. Um, I stand on my testimony that I submitted. I also uh, included a statement by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. This is uh, a group of scientists that uh, originally formed in 1848. Uh, so the Thomas Edisons, Albert Einsteins, and those people have been members of this. And today it's made up of uh, uh, from uh, astrologers to zoologists and people with a great deal of uh, scientific knowledge. Uh, they, their statement uh, is uh, not to support the labeling, and uh, if I may read directly from their paper. <clears throat> 
in order to receive regulatory approval in the united states each need new g m crop must be subject to rigorous analysis and testing it must be shown to be the same as the parent crop from which it derived and if a new protein trait has been added that protein must be shown to be neither toxic nor allergenic as a result and contrary to popular misconception gm crops are more extensively tested than uh... ever added to our food supply there are occasional claims that feeding gm foods to animals causes aberrations ranging from digestive disorders to sterility tumors and premature death although such claims are often sensationalized and receive a great deal of media attention none have stood up to the scrutiny of rigorous scientific scrutiny and uh... it goes on to say that the fda does not require labeling of a food based on a specific genetic modification procedure used in the development of the input of the crop uh... legally mandating such a label would only serve to mislead and falsely alarm consumers thank you what you eat for lunch thank you non-gmo foods anybody else Hector Valenzuela, uh, in support. Uh, I work at UH. I've worked at UH for the past 22 years as a crop production specialist, but I'm speaking on my personal capacity. The science of health risk assessment uh, for genetically modified crops is in its infancy. Uh, back in the 90s, the science of risk assessment was in the dark ages. That means that over the past 15 years, uh, the, we as a population have been consuming GMOs uh, with poor or no uh, health risk assessments uh, with respect to genetically modified crops. <clears throat> In, furthermore, GMOs don't work alone but are part of a package that involves the high use of pesticides, uh, water, and energy for crop production. And the excessive use of all of these resources may have a long-term impact on the health of our communities. Uh, there was a statement made that the uh, regulatory process in the U.S. was robust, uh, and I believe that it's the opposite. It's actually full of loopholes. Uh, if you can compare it to the uh, housing regulations of housing or financial regulation, uh, GMO regulations by the government is, al is also full of loopholes. And the FDA does not make any statement concerning the safety of GM crops. They turn the tables to the industry and allow the industry to make those, those assessments. Uh, but they are conducted based on an inherent conflict of interest uh, because they want to see uh, positive results. Uh, overall, today I have heard uh, several statements from industry and those opposing this uh, resolution, and I find those claims to have been unsubstantiated. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.
Jerry Hoosier, Kauai County Council, support. Douglas Vincent, PhD, opposed. Javier Mendez Alvarez, support. John Schinner, support. Lynn Howe, support. Nancy Devontes, support. Robert Paul, opposed. Gregory Firo, opposed. Mark Ferguson, Hawaii Organic Farming Association, support. strongly supports the passage of this bill for the following reasons. Um, you know, under the National Organic Program, genetic modification, commonly known as GMOs, is not approved for use for the production of organic foodstuffs. The production of GMO foods presents the risk of contamination in the growing, processing, and handling of organic foodstuffs, and thus GMO foods pose an economic threat to organic agriculture and farming. Uh, organic farms close to neighboring GMO fields are at risk of cross-pollination and contamination from GMOs, <coughs> causing potential economic loss and hardship to Hawaii's organic farmers. Food production in Hawaii should be moving towards more sustainable pono or righteous, keeping in harmony with the state's motto, methods of agriculture, foods and farming methods that are in harmony with nature. You know, not using harmful chemicals such as insecticides, herbicides, chemical fertilizers, etc. GMO foods are moving in the opposite direction, and the production results in unnatural foods with unknown long-term health and environmental risks and increased chemical use in the production of food. Hawaii's agricultural land should be utilized to grow foods for the people of Hawaii, preferably grown using sustainable organic farming methods. To provide Hawaii with food self-sufficiency and security. They should not be being used as a laboratory to test the growing of GMO crops which do not contribute in any way to food security in Hawaii. GMOs once released into the environment cannot be recalled. The long-term impacts of GMOs on the environment and on other species of life and the ecology are little understood. Currently, GMO companies are free to grow experimental GMO crops in Hawaii with little or no oversight and without public knowledge. Public hearings and a review by the Department of Agriculture will provide this necessary oversight. Please vote in favor of House Bill 97. Thank you. Thank you. Gottlieb, Point Comet, uh, Cattlemen's Council, Inc. Opposed? <coughs> Robert Harris, Sierra Club. Aubrey Allen, Babes Against Biotech, support. Benjamin Schaefer, support. Brenton Pang, support. Carl York, support. Cecilia Hartman, support. Claire Jumonville, support. Courtney Brunch, support. Uh, GMO Free Maui, support. Cynthia Chun, support. David Dinner, support.
Okay, our, our list of uh, testimony that we have received is on the legislature's website. Is there anyone here that wants to testify uh, in person? If you could please go to the mic, please. This is on House Bill 97. Please state your name. Hello, hi, Chair. Hi, Chair. My name is Jerry D. Pietro. I'm a volunteer with Hawaii Seed and GMO Free Kauai. I think House Bill 97 is a really great idea and in support of this. Uh, many of our state lands um, on Kauai are being used for GMO experimentation. Um, they bypass the EIS process that should have been triggered for changing use on state land. Um, they they uh, said that GMO corn was the same as regular agriculture, so no EIS was triggered at this time. And I believe if we had um, asked for an EA or an EIS, um, we would have had the chance to explore harm. On our island, we have uh, had experimentation of several crops that are also um, have indigenous relatives. Um, the invasive nature of genetically modified crops, uh, they're very promiscuous, the cross-pollination, as we've seen, um, even with their corn, the corn field tests uh, are spread into very remote areas. The biotech companies even stay away from themselves because of the traveling of pollen. Um, we've seen this with papaya. Uh, the UHC bank had contamination, you know, because not only is there the danger in eating the fruit, but you have the seeds to contend with. So um, I think for the protect, protection of our um, native species, we have seen GMO tests of rice, sunflower, and cotton, which all have um, indigenous Hawaiian native plants. Uh, we've also have had um, bent grass experiments, Roundup resistant uh, grass experiments on Kauai, which is very hazardous. Um, they've been left to go to seed, and if the pollen had transferred into the wild grass population, we could have uh, much more in the super weed um, issues. So I think definitely these should be considered an invasive species, and uh, all work to protect our native plants um, should be enforced. We, as you guys know, are the capital of uh, the loss of biodiversity. We have a very fragile ecosystem. Um, this definitely would be a great thing uh, to trigger permitting for these types of experimental crops. Mahalo. Thank you. Aloha committee members, Nomi Carmona with Space Against Biotech again. I want to voice our strong support for HB 97. I did submit an extensive written testimony. I'm just going to give you a couple of points that I find pertinent. Uh, these are an invasive species. This is, this is the most invasive species you can possibly think of because it changes the genes. It doesn't just take over an area or a habitat or a food supply. It actually takes over the genetics, which is highly concerning. Um, of course, the pesticide use that's inherent with GMO farming practices will affect our uh, unintended targets in the area. We actually have found even just the spraying of GMO herbicide atrazine changes the sex of frogs. They're spraying this in Hawaii on us. I don't want to have unintentional mutated hermaphrodite grandchildren, quite frankly. Um, it's, it's, it's that important. Uh, these open air releases contaminate uh, both conventional and organic farms, and it's undesired. So when those farms are passed down from generation to generation, those seeds are saved for 10 and 15 and 20 and hundreds of years. Once even just 10 or 15 feet of a conventional or organic farm is contaminated with GMO, that takes out the entire farm. That means they cannot sell those crops as what they were intended to be sold. And if you're an organic farmer and GMOs get onto your land unintentionally because the wind blows and GMOs shouldn't be allowed in open air, that's our position, then you lose everything. You lose everything, and you'll be lucky if you don't get sued by a GMO company who has a patent on their seeds, all the while proclaiming that they are uh, substantially equivalent, while arguing out of a different side of their mouths at the patent office for the right to own and sue based on these things. 
In addition to the massive genetic alterations and intentionally escaping their intended test fields, the damages to the environment are irretractable. There are millions of us across the globe who are fighting GMOs. Horizontal gene transfer is a very serious risk. Uh, so what we were talking about earlier, if you eat, say, for example, some meat that was uh, fed GMO feed, and then you find that you have BT pesticide in your system, uh, that's one option. It can also lodge in your intestine, of course, you produce your own pesticide in your gut. So I know I'm out of time here. I'm just going to wrap this up. As the uh, pesticides are no longer working the roundup of yesteryear, they're introducing stronger and stronger chemicals to handle the uh, weeds and bugs who have developed resistance to these chemicals. This means they're spraying 2,4-D on us now. This is one of the most dangerous chemicals known to man, the component of Agent Orange. And since the most open-air experimental GMO field trials are being conducted in Hawaii, we're talking thousands, no one else's government lets corporations or chemical companies come and experiment openly on their constituents. Unlimited thousands of experiments. We are unwilling subjects to these companies, and we don't want to be. So we absolutely want the opportunity for a hearing, and we're willing to go down to the Department of Ag every single time and do everything we can to demonstrate these crops do not belong in Hawaii. I appreciate the opportunity to testify, and I would also like to mention that they do affect our bee population as the leading queen bee exporter in the entire world. GMO neonicotinoid pesticides have seriously been linked to bee colony collapse, and if we want to have any food at all, we're going to have to get a handle on this as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Macy. Uh, I want to thank for this bill. It's an excellent bill. I strongly support it. Uh, as part of this uh, approval process, we need to make sure that these companies uh, can give us an assurance 100% beyond a doubt that these things are safe. Um, and it, not some study funding that they did. Uh, I, I'd like to see some kind of um, independent study involved in that process too before we approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Keiko Bonk. Thank you for allowing me to speak on House Bill 97 uh, that requires the permitting for invasive species. I support this bill. Um, I'm speaking um, on this bill and the last one I forgot to mention uh, with my um, Pono hat on a, a small um, organization that recently started called Pono. And um, we are an organization that is bringing uh, back into good policy making, ethics based on sound science and, and to, um, uh, bringing the idea that morality and ethics are involved in making good decisions and policies in Hawaii. Um, I, like many of the other speakers, are supporting this bill because we think that we have a fragile environment in Hawaii, very special place, and it's time we start treating our aina and um, uh, the people that live here uh, in a very special way so that we need to look into all um, the consequences that will be impacted by introducing invasive species. Uh, Pono has been tracking uh, the 439 <laughs> endangered species um, unique to Hawaii uh, uh, for many years and um, the waiting list, which is the real uh, endangered species list, keeps growing um, as we speak here today. Uh, most of, a lot of the species on our national endangered species list, um, the highest 40 are of Hawaiian species, and most of them on the, the top 40 list have actually gone extinct. So when you look at these species lists, Hawaii is the capital of the world in terms of its uh, species going extinct, and um, we are uh, known for this dubious reason. I think that we need to start really thinking about that and anything invasive in Hawaii, anything, um, any kind of organisms that we're bringing in, anything that could alter the way um, our, the, the, the um, ecosystems of Hawaii and also um, um, alter our health in any way should be examined and thoroughly. So thank you very much. Thank you. Again, my name is Juanita Kawamoto, and I am the subcommittee chair of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, and we strongly support House Bill 97. 
on protection of ag products uh, from invasive species. We feel that there is a great loss of money, livelihood, and health that's imposed upon the natural, organic farmers and our community as a whole. Um, we feel that there are also um, impacts and lack of data to inform our community as to what is happening with regards to uh, this, this very important concern. Uh, GMO representatives stated earlier that they report all their um, uh, activities in detail as part of their good agricultural practices. And yet, um, there's so much of the community that is, is, is putting out a cry to our legislators and our state to say, we don't even know where the farms are. We weren't even included in the decision as to where they were going. We don't understand what's happening with the water sources that are also impacting um, their communities, where you know, these groups can go ahead and add pesticides to injection wells that they propose will have no impact and, and apply for these permits. And yet, you know, again, a lot of the community is not included uh, prior to even getting to that level. We should be included in a lot of these issues before it even gets to this building. It should be happening in our neighborhood boards. It should be addressing and, and engaging with the people of Hawaii. And yet, a lot of us, all we see is this big corporation that has just somehow overtaken a lot of what's happening here in the island, let alone release such a large percentage of our state ag lands to these companies. So again, we're not being included, and I think it would be best that we consider and regard and respect the, pe the people of Hawaii and please include them in this process. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from House School 97? Share those with Hello, hi again, Chairman and Committee. Um, the main concern that I have with uh, HB 97 is that it looks like the Department of Ag has the final decision on our health with the permits. And I have concern about that, that whether or not the Department of Health has a joint um, say in terms of the final permit. Because I would want, as, as a person who wants to be healthy, I would want to know that the Department of Health was totally behind a permit. That, you know, since um, GMOs have been so allowed in Hawaii, May, um, I think we really need to start giving the credence and value to rules and regulations that would be coming up through the Department of Health and be applicable to a permit. Is, does the Department of Health have anything to do with getting this permit? That's my first question. Well, actually, we're not taking questions, but no, at the moment, no. Okay, so I would say somehow getting this into this, if, if this go passes, that would be a very important consideration. Because right now, we're not being considered. It's really just, you know, whether, you're, I mean, I think it's exciting that you're getting out creative things. You know, that's what the mind does. You know, it loves creativity and new things, novel things. But there's an impact to our health. And looking at the updates with that through the Department of Health should be included in this in, in terms of my recommendation as a health professional and consultant. Mahalo. Madam Chair, that concludes the list of test proponents for House Bill 97. Okay, members, any questions? Okay, with that, we will move on to HB 747 related to agriculture. Yes, Jim.
I'm looking at the uh, agenda here. Thank you. Alan Gottman, Local Food Coalition, support. Alan Gottman, Hawaii County, Council, support. I think I'm going to uh, cut away for a little while um, just to save battery power. Uh, there's one more uh, bill that I am uh, very interested in, and that would be uh, the uh, one to um, record. Uh, pesticide use, uh, which would finally get a number as far as uh, how much uh, pesticide is being used and that kind of stuff. I'm running low on battery power. You can catch this, I think, on Olelo TV, uh, which would be channel 54 or streaming at uh, olelo.org. But, you know, these things that go over time might not be scheduled in, so I'm not sure about that. I'm going to try coming back uh, when they hear, I believe it's 637 regarding uh, pesticides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh zoom out here on the sign that we that's here in front if you decide to come down and uh, visit the hearing over at the uh, Capitol. I'm going to sign up. Thanks for joining